Hey everybody, this is Brian, and welcome to the 107th Qt tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. So we're just going to go File, New. We're going to select a Qt console application. And let's just call this uh, 107. Actually, let's call it Qt 107. I need to get better with my naming convention here. Just put it wherever you normally put it. All right, and we get this beautiful console application. So let's build it, and sure enough, there it is. Ta-da! So what are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be talking about memory management with Qt. Now, I shouldn't say with Qt. I should say with C++ in general because, well, the ugly side of C++ is that you do have to manage your own memory. Now, that can be good and that can be bad. We're going to discuss a little bit of both today. So first thing we're going to do is include Qtabug. That way we can see what's going on here. And we're going to just say int. We're going to make a function that returns a pointer to an integer. And we're just going to say int i equal new int. And we're going to say 22. Just because I like the number 22. Don't ask me why. I just like it. Of course, we're going to return i. And down here, we're going to consume that function. We're going to say int z. Oops, sorry, int pointer to z. And we're going to say this equals test. Now let's actually just throw out some Q debugs here. And we want to say i. Actually, we want to say. And of course, Q debug. You can tell it's been a while since I've done one of these. Wow, I can't type. I've got a, a whole new system. I mean, not just a new keyboard. I mean, a whole new computer, new headset, new mic, new speakers. I think the only thing that really still exists was the monitor. So let's run this and see what happens here. And sure enough, we get 22 and 22. Because in test, we're doing a Q debug 22. And in the main, we're doing the same thing. So if we remove the star out of that, let's just take that one out. You can see the actual address and memory of where that pointer is. Remember, a pointer, in case you slept through this part of your C++ class, a pointer simply points to a location in memory. You have what's called the heap. Now, the heap is memory. Just think of it like a, a big heap of hay. You just throw whatever you want on it. The more memory they have, the more places you can hide things. So when you're making a pointer to a new int, you're actually saying go out into the heap and allocate a chunk of memory. Now that chunk of memory is going to stay out there. So what, what's wrong with this program? I mean, it worked, but what's wrong with it? Well, we never deleted it. We've created these things out in the heap, but we never got rid of them. So then we got to go, all right, well, let's, uh, geez, we should delete it here, right? Let's delete i. Well, I can't do that because we have to return it. So, wow, we can't do that either. So, all right, well, let's delete it here. That would tentatively solve the problem, but what if you've got a program that has hundreds upon hundreds, if not thousands of functions across multiple modules? How are you going to track when that actually needs to be deleted? What if you introduce threads into this? Oh my. Yeah, you can see the complexity just goes through the roof. So what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about my friend and your friend, the Q scoped pointer. Now, what is Q scoped pointer? It is a automatic pointer, meaning it deletes itself. And you can see how from that tooltip it says dynamically allocate an object that deletes its upon destruction meaning it knows the scope of that pointer and it'll destroy it as needed. So let's actually we're just going to comment that out and we're going to do the Q scope pointer way. Q scope pointer int we're going to say i 
new int and we're going to say 23 just so we know it's different then we're going to say queue debug now we can't just say i because then we're just queue debugging the queue scope pointer we have to actually do the data here so the data is actually the D pointer inside of the Q scope pointer object. Now we're going to return this. And let's actually comment these out. And we are going to say I want to kind of show you here. Let's just copy this guy. Ooh, ooh. Now you see the problem here. Can't convert QScope pointer int to int i in return. Hmm. So what we can do is actually return the data. But you notice how, ooh, that didn't work out well. What do we do here? What we need to do is call take. What take does is it says, okay, we're going to take control over this Q scope pointer. So it'll no longer be encapsulated and it's going to pass the actual value of that over. Well, we still run the risk right here of having that memory leak. We haven't actually deleted it. You can see how there's the address, there's the data, that 23 is coming from this Q debug Z. So it's still out in memory. So we need to take care of that. So what we can do here is actually fumble around with this a little bit. I love copy and paste. I am the copy and paste king. Ta-da! if we add that in now we got the 23 so let's actually recompile this one more time sure enough 23 23 now when we close it the memory is deleted automatically why because it's encapsulated in the Q scope pointer now you may be asking why are you doing this twice why don't you just you know do this right here and then return it and then handle it down here well that's the thing. If you ever do any error handling, you would want to do a try catch, which we've talked about error handling before. And you're going to want to know that when that fails, it's going to go out of scope, so it'll automatically delete the memory. So even if it fails, it has an error, it's going to delete it because it goes out of scope. That's the magic of the Q scoped pointer. Well, this is Brian. I hope you found this educational and entertaining. And uh, stay tuned. I hope to make many more of these videos in the future.